All right, let's continue our topic on ventilation fans. So um, now let's talk about the fan uh, fan performance parameters. Okay, so fan performance parameters. Okay, so first, um, your fan is actually, uh, let's try to illustrate it here. Uh, say, we just have a square housing, but of course, um, it comes on, on different um, designs. Okay, so you have your blades, uh, fan blades here, and it's rotating on it's rotating so because it's rotating then we, it means that it has some speed right so let's try it so we have um, speed and let's have the symbol n for the speed in some in some reference they use the symbol rpm okay so the speed and that's in revolutions per minute or whatever oh no I think yeah that's it <laughs> that's the revolution per minute okay and then what else so you notice that there's also a diameter um, by the way I have a small fans um, small actual fan here so so this fan when it rotates then uh, we said that there's a speed associated to its rotation and we also noticed that there is um, uh, there's this um, specific or uh, I mean there's this diameter of this fan so you can have fans that are uh, that are large in in diameter or or small in diameter okay so that's right okay what else so if you notice that if this is rotating then there's actually um, it's actually sucking the air here and then exiting it uh, oh, yes it's correct so this is the inlet the inlets uh, inlet side and then this is the outlet okay so when you say um, movement of air recall that we are talking about the volumetric flow rate volumetric uh, flow rate or just airflow or flow rate okay uh, let's designate it with the symbol Q okay so um, the flow rate is actually the volume of air volume of air moved okay, per unit time so that's when I say volume that's gonna be meter cube per let's say minute or liters per minute or meter cube per seconds or CFM so we have this units here the volumetric flow rate okay what else of course it has um, as, as I've said it's uh, can have some capacity in the pressure so we call that static uh, static pressure so let's just use the symbol SP although in some reference they use the symbol P or I don't know uh, is it, uh, P for pressure but for us we we'll use this uh, SP static pressure so as I've said this is something like uh, the capacity or um, um, I mean I I have mentioned also the resistance but this is now where it gets delineated now now when we talk about fan systems or I mean the fan we talk about the fan it has a capacity right so this static pressure refers to the to the capacity of the fan okay uh, or let's say pressure capacity pressure capacity and usually the units would be um, inch H2O so in inches or 
let's say mm h2o or sometimes in just pascals okay so uh, this is in terms of head so the pressure if you notice this in inch that's actually the measurement from a manometer so for example we have your we have this um, this conduit where the where the air flows inside so if you attach a manometer if you if you drill a hole here then you attach a manometer okay so this manometer actually will experience um, a change um, let's say uh, we fill this this manometer with with um, with fluids so let's assume for now that there's no fluids um, flowing flowing inside so the level of the water or your yes uh, I mean H2O although you can also use other terms of fluids but for us I say this is the the initial level of H2O so when the air starts to flow then it's actually causing this um, this rise of water so let's say it went this far okay and the pressure difference I mean the pressure difference I mean the height difference would be okay, the height difference okay Delta H so I say height or uh, length or I mean it's just a unit of meter so that's why that's an inch H2 okay so that's uh, the principle behind is that if you notice that uh, when there's a flowing fluid there's actually some pressures associated uh, or pressures that's actually um, acting on this surface on this inside surface so recall that in basic fluid mechanics or um, physics that pressure acts perpendicular to the surface so there's actually a forces that's um, okay so if we try to zoom this out so there's actually uh, okay there's actually forces that's acting on this uh, on this fluid so that's why you, you get a um, a height difference okay so that's uh, the static pressure of course there are other types of pressures such as the velocity pressure so once there's um, I mean once there's a movement of, of fluids then of course you will also experience the velocity pressure okay so the velocity pressure plus the static pressure that's the total pressure the relationship is just P T is equal to P S plus P V so how would you measure I mean we have already illustrated how to measure this by just attaching this manometer now if you want to to measure this total pressure then the orientation of your manometer would just be like this uh, you just have to uh, direct it parallel to the flow okay so if you have this um, orientation of this um, inlet, then what you'll measure is the uh, is the total pressure. Okay, so for now, let's just discuss about this um, static pressure. Okay, so that's the static pressure. Okay, what else? Uh, we'll also have um, the power or horsepower. Okay, power so if you if you, I mean we can also use the the symbol P or in some reference it's HP because they're in English units so let's just use this HP and then SP is static pressure or gives the flow rate uh, this is the diameter and speed is N okay so these are so far the parameters that we have for it, for, it, for a fan device course there's also efficiencies and probably other terms but so far what we'll need is um, are this ones okay so now there are um, there is a relationship between these uh, speed uh, volumetric fluids static pressure or 
uh, HP, a fan. So let's say for example, if I increase the speed, what will happen to the flow rate? Or if I increase the static pressure, what will happen to the flow rate? Or if I increase the diameter, what will happen to, uh, to the other parameters? So there is a relationship, and that relationship is called the fan loss. Okay, so fan loss, they're just um, a mathematical relationship between the um, parameters of a fan, of course. You'll also encounter um, this, I mean the loss, uh, yeah. you'll also encounter in in pump systems. Okay, so now I'll just write it in terms of the table. So let's say we'll consider a constant, uh, constant, um, diameter so meaning if this is just our diameter and we'll just vary the speed okay so I'll just say variable and we'll just vary the speed what will happen to the to the flow rate so we have this relationship q sub 2 over q sub 1 is equal to n sub 2 all over n sub 1 Okay, so it just means that uh, we had a subscript uh, q sub 1 and then q sub 2. So it just means that, for example, I have this, um, I mean, the condition I have is n sub 1 and q sub 2. At a given uh, speed, I have this flow rate, given flow rate. So what will be my flow rate if I increase my, if I increase my speed? Let's say I, I wanted to, uh, to have a faster speed. So if I increase the speed twice, what will happen to the flow rate? So this is actually how the, the equation will work. So if we know the initial conditions or one of the conditions, um, then we'll be able to find the, the adjusted, adjusted con conditions. Okay, so this relationship just simply says that if we double, uh, let's say our, our N2 will be twice as N1, then it means that our Q will just uh, will just double. Okay. Um, in terms of um, of static pressure, so we have this S P two all over S P one is equal to n two n one squared. Okay, so for this one, the ratio of this uh, static pressure is if we increase, if we increase the speed, we'll have an increase of this static pressure. Of course, this refers to the capacity. We'll have uh, four times because it's squared. So if we increase this twice, so two squ squared, then that's going to be four times. Okay, what else? Uh, we have this HP. So HP refers to the um, power, HP, okay, N2, N1, and this one is cube. Okay, so um, the, the basic idea is that if you adjust the, I mean, if you adjust one, one parameter for a given condition, then you'll be able to know the adjusted conditions. So this is um, the fan law, uh, fan loss for constant diameter, and uh, we just vary the speed. So take note, even if you just read in here, constant diameter, this is also constant um, density. Okay, so now what will happen if we have a constant speed, and then we'll just, okay, constant speed and constant velocity, uh, constant density, and we'll try to change the, um, the diameter let's say instead of this diameter we try to to increase the, the diameter so okay so we'll have this q sub 2 over q sub 1 and I think this is cube then for the static pressure, this one is squared. And for the HP, it will 
B. Um, this one is raised to the fifth. Okay, this is raised to the fifth. Okay, so these are the phallus that we'll be needing for our calculations. Uh, maybe, um, I mean, calculations if we'll have to make some adjustments in our fan, uh, in our ventilation fans. Okay, now let's take a look at the uh, fan performance curves. So, I mean, we can also make um, a problem-solving type of questions here, I mean, based on this fan loss, but uh, for now, we'll just leave it as it is. I just want to introduce it to you that um, there's a relationship for the virus parameters. But what I'm really trying to 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 obtain is, or I mean, my goal in this lecture topic is actually to be able to select a fan. So, so we'll just leave this fan loss. Uh, just as it is okay so let's move on to our next topic which is the um, fan performance curve okay fan performance curve so it's actually a curve in the um, parameters are just actually and this uh, let's say the um, the flow rate so this is let's say CFM and then our uh, static pressure so let's say SB in some units on this y-axis so different types of fans um, will have different types of, of performance curve so for example um, a centrifugal fan will have a, a different different curve than an actual fan or let's say a, a tube actual fan will have a different performance curve than a than a propeller fan so the point here is fan performance curve is something like a graphical illustration of uh, of the relationship of the um, parameters okay so for example we have this uh, this type of fan and um, the the fan performance curve is like this so in this curve actually you'll be able to determine the static pressure if you know the flow rate or the, or the other way around if you know the static pressure we'll be able to know the flow rate okay so they're actually um, they may be uh, available already in the manufacturer's catalogs so it's it's just a graphical um, uh, a graphical way for for selecting funds okay so let's say you have this um, flow rate you know already the flow rate because we have um, I mean we have already calculated um, the maximum ventilation rates for example so if we know this flow rate then we'll go to the, the catalog or the fan performance curve and then if we want to determine the static pressure of the fan, then let's just uh, project this. Okay, so here, uh, once it intersects the curve, then you just have to point it to the right. Then it means that you have uh, this fan at this flow rate will have um, a static pressure of this uh, of this value, a static pressure capacity of uh, this value. Okay, so in some instances, you'll have a fan performance curve that will include the, um, the brake horsepower. Okay, so you have the brake horsepower. And the brake horsepower is actually on this right side. So you have this BHP. So if you want to know the brake horsepower of your, um, of your selected fan, then you just have to um, continue this... Um, this line, the straight line, and then um, go towards the right to be able to find the value of your BHP, break horsepower. Okay, so again, this is something like a selection, 
but it's just um, a graphical way. Okay, now let's move on to fan performance table. Now, in some in some instances, when there's no fan performance curve available, then we can look for fan performance uh, table for. So instead of, okay, instead of having um, a graphical represent, uh, representation, what we get is a tabulated values. Okay, so one example here is actually taken from one of our reference from the, I think this is mechanical uh, ventilation uh, with the Midwest plan. So. In this table, we have this example fan multi reading tables. So, in this course or in our design exam, we'll be using this. And so, I think it should be we shall be familiarized with this table. Okay, so you notice that we have on this first row, we have the fan diameter uh, that's in inches, and we have the uh, horsepower of the fan. So we have one of 30 or one of horsepower. Okay, so uh, this is actually, I mean, the units of this is actually in English units. So if we have calculated in terms of metric, then we just have to convert it to, to English units. Um, so that we'll be able to use this table. Okay, so that's the horsepower and then the next would be the rpm so the rpm you notice that there are two rpm for each type of um, fan diameter so for example 24 inches fan then we have a 1200 925 and in this case it's actually uh, there are three rpms available for this so 1200 925 and 775 Okay, so um, after this RPM, we have this static pressure or inches of water. So, for example, uh, we have uh, we have this uh, zero static pressure, or 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.125 until 0 0.25. Uh, the reported um, static pressure for agricultural buildings are usually from I think if I remember it correctly, that's uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 so it's just uh, that's just the range okay so if we know the static pressure and if we know the uh, let's say if we know the static pressure and we know the flow rate then we'll be able to determine what will be the diameter of the fan that we'll be needing right so uh, that's all for now Let's discuss, uh, I mean, later in the next lecture, we'll be doing some calculations regarding this fan selections using this table. Okay, so let's move on for now uh, to the next topic, which is the system resistance. Uh, by the way, I think it's better also to discuss the why is this curve like this so I think this is it so you, you can have you know actually you can you can obtain information why I mean for example if you have a higher static pressure and of course you will have a, a lower a lower flow rate but if you have a lower static pressure and this side for example so you'll notice that you'll have a higher flow rate. So it's like, it's just like, um, I think it's like having this experiment. Like for example, this is your, your fan, and then you are trying to put a, a blockage here, a, a cover or something. So if you, for example, this, uh, this, is your, this is the fan, and then you're trying to block this, of course, what will happen to your flow rate? Of course, you will not experience any uh, any flow rate because it's it's actually blocked. But if it's slightly open, let's say 
um, maybe 20% or 50% then you will be uh, you will have or you will start to to feel uh, some flow rates and uh, some flow rates that's uh, that's actually going on okay so if what if imagine that uh, you have a totally open okay totally open so you will have a maximum flow rate here okay so that's the um, illustration behind this performance curve okay so now let's go to the topic of system resistance okay system resistance Okay, so the system resistance is actually also in terms of static pressure. So uh, the system, uh, I mean, for example, we have your, let's illustrate it in terms of uh, the plan view. So this is the um, tunnel ventilated housing, and then you have your fence over here on one end. Then you have this let's say evaporative cooling pads on on one end okay so recall that the principle of this tunnel control pulsing is that it has to suck the air inside and then exit it on this end okay so actually if there's no evaporative cooling pads here it's actually easier for the air to 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 move in but because of this presence, uh, I mean, because of the presence of these evaporative cooling pads, then it's actually adding some resistance to the airflow. So, evaporative cooling pads or um, for fan devices that has um, that has shutters or fan guards, then it includes um, resistance to the systems. So, also for example, you have a, a dirty inlets or dirty uh, the dirty fans so you'll you'll also be increasing the resistance of the system so don't be confused with the system resistance and the static pressure that we mentioned with regard to the fans because it's like this if you recall in our topic on uh, agricultural structures engineering uh, regarding the LRFD we have this factored uh, factored capacity must be greater than the uh, greater than or equal than the uh, factored loads. Okay, so although they're they they have the same units, this one is actually referring to the actual loads. Okay, let's say actual loads. We're asked for this uh, factored capacity. This, um, this refers to the capacity. Okay, capacity of um, of your section okay so if we illustrate this one so for example this is our uh, beam for example so the beam has a section right okay let's <laughs> let's draw it instead okay so for example this is your beam and then it, your your beam given I mean, given the sizes, for example, you know already the size of your beam. If you apply a load on that beam, a pressure loads, then uh, when you say capacity of resection, that refers to the capacity of the beam. Whereas the actual loads is this, uh, the loads that you put into. So it just means that um, when you say factored capacity shall be greater than the factored uh, loads, it just means that your capacity section must be able to I mean, uh, I mean your your capacity must be able to support the loads that is uh, subjected to to your to your, to your component. So it's just the same thing with the fans. So our fan capacity must be greater than the than the resistances of this system. Okay, otherwise it will not be able to move this this air or this ventilation air. So it's just again going back to this um, beam 
beam illustration. So imagine if you have uh, greater loads compared to your capacity, what will happen is your your structural component will, will actually break. So here, it's the same thing. We should have, um, I mean, if if your resistance is greater than your airflow, then it just means that you're not actually um, doing the ventilation process. Okay, so that's the system resistance. Okay, so there's also a value of this, if you notice in this document that we have from the Midwest plan, we have a typical resistance to air movement. Now we have this, for example, a shutter. What's the static pressure? If your shutter is clean, then this is the static pressure. If it is dirty, then uh, we have an increased static pressure in terms of H2O, inch H2O. So, uh, what else? For example, we have the fan guards. Now, fan guards that's clean and it's uh, protected with wire mesh, then we have the static pressure. Or if it's a dock system, then we have the static pressure. So, means in order to determine the, the the system resistance we just have to add these static pressures that we have okay so if you plot the static uh, I mean the the system resistance what we'll get is a curve like this so we have the system resistance And we have this Q over here and then the static pressure. So for a system resistance, the curve will be something like this. But for our static pressure capacity, or I mean from our fan performance curve, okay, you know, from our fan performance curve, it's like this. So you notice we have Q on this x-axis and static pressure on the y-axis. Okay, so if we try to uh, combine these two, what we'll get, uh, what we'll get is something like this. We have this and you have that. So this is your system resistance, and then this is your fan performance or static pressure of fans or SP curve of your fan. So you notice that there's uh, an intersection point, and this point is what we call as the operating uh, operating point. Of course, so uh, in the design process, then we have to know the capacity of the fan. We have to determine the system resistance, and so be able to uh, to actually uh, select. And select the the fan systems that that we'll be needing. Okay, so in reality, of course, um, I mean, I don't know if you can really hit this uh, this intersection point, but uh, I assume that we'll have uh, we'll be having uh, some some range over here. So we'll have a range. Okay, so that's going to be a range. And we we'll also have we we'll, uh, also have a range for this um, SP curve the fans. Okay, so the the rule is we should be uh, we shall be close to this point. Okay, so that's all about this um, system resistance. Okay, so we'll continue our um, our topic on these fan systems on the next video.